So in this video, we're going to be looking at average bond enthalpies and how we can actually use these values to calculate enthalpy change itself. Now, average bond enthalpies is defined as being the average enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous covalent bonds is broken. And when we look at bond enthalpies, right, we know that they can have positive values and negative values as well. If we were to look at positive values, we know that this is going to be an endothermic process. And so what we can actually say is that bond breaking is going to be an endothermic process. If we were to look at bond enthalpies being negative, we know this is exothermic and so we can consider bond forming to be an exothermic process itself as well. Now some reactions if they're going to be overall endothermic in terms of their process where bond breaking takes over we know that we've got a positive enthalpy change whereas if we were to look at an exothermic reaction we end up with a negative process overall the enthalpy change is going to be negative and so bond forming is going to be the major step in that reaction as well. Now, some reactions can actually be considered to be endothermic and in terms of bond breaking and bond forming, we need to say that more energy is required for breaking bonds than is released by forming bonds. And then we can also consider some reactions to be exothermic. And what we need to be able to say to explain that is that more energy is actually released by forming bonds than energy required when breaking bonds itself as well. Now, there are some limitations when it comes to using bond enthalpies. When we look at the standard enthalpy changes, these are actually going to be different compared to those calculated using average bond enthalpies. And there's two reasons for that. The first one is, is that the actual bond enthalpies may be different from average values itself. And we know that bond enthalpies, they actually vary from compound to compound. So a carbon-carbon bond will actually vary in terms of its strength and hence the energy required to break that bond, looking at different compounds. Whereas if we were to look at an average bond enthalpy, that actually takes into account all of our different compounds itself. Now the conditions, they're not going to be standard. If we were to look at the gaseous covalent bonds actually broken, if we were to look at that, right? Right. let's say if we had something like propan 1-ol which in its standard state under standard conditions is going to be a liquid at room temperature and pressure we know that that's going to be different in terms of the gaseous form where the actual molecule is going to be gaseous itself as well. Now, let's say if we were to calculate the enthalpy change using average bond enthalpies, we need to be able to take the total energy absorbed, otherwise known as the total bonds broken, and subtract the total energy released, otherwise known as the total bonds formed itself as well. And in this example over here, you can see that we've got some enthalpy changes provided towards the bottom right, and we've got a reaction equation over here. We're asked to calculate the enthalpy change of reaction in kilojoules per mole. How do we actually go about doing that? Well, I like to start off by drawing out my molecules because you can make some really simple mistakes and silly mistakes on this. So I've got here hydrogen, I've got here iodine, and then I'm going to react those two together to form two lots of hydrogen iodide itself as well. And so to calculate the enthalpy change of reaction itself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my reactants minus products. And I always remember that if I'm dealing with bond enthalpies, I'm always going to do reactants minus products itself as well so in other words the bonds broken minus the bonds formed the total energy absorbed minus the total energy released and so i remember brap so if that's the case i'm going to take the bond enthalpy for the hydrogen hydrogen bond which in this case is going to be 436 and then i'm going to add that to the bond enthalpy of the iodine iodine bond and so i end up with a value of 151 there right add them together there's my reactants my total energy absorbed or my total bonds broken itself and then i'm going to subtract right two lots of because i've got stoichiometry of two i've got two lots of these bonds over here two times 298 itself and so i put that in my calculator and i end up with the value for my enthalpy change actually being minus nine and that's going to be kilojoules per mole as well so yeah, we can see over here that bromine reacts with iodine to form iodine monobromide, which you can see over here. And the table shows the list of average bond enthalpies which are required in different parts of this question. And you can actually see different bond enthalpies with given values in kilojoules per mole. And you're asked to calculate the enthalpy change of formation, delta HF, for iodine monobromide itself as well. Now the first thing that we're going to need is, is we're going to need an equation for the enthalpy change of formation. So in that case, I'm going to take iodine, I'm going to react that with bromine, and then I'm going to end up forming right one lot of iodine monobromide itself. Need to balance this, so I've got 0 0.5 lots of bromine and then 0 0.5 lots of iodine itself. And so just remember that you can actually half your average bond enthalpies. You need to think about the stoichiometry that's taking place. You've got half a lot of iodine iodine bonds. You've got half a lot of bromine bromine bonds. And then you've also got one lot of iodine bromine bonds itself as well. 
And if you were to form an equation to calculate the enthalpy change of formation, you know that's going to be equal to your reactants minus products. It's going to be BRAP. So in that case, right, what you're going to do is you're going to do, right, in square brackets and then circular brackets, 0 0.5 times by your iodine iodine bond, which is 151, added to, and then it's going to be 0 0.5 times by 193 and then you're going to close your brackets your square brackets as well remember not to make any bod mass errors over here and then right you're going to subtract 175 itself as well you don't really need brackets in this step and then what you actually end up with as your enthalpy change has been is minus three itself and that's going to be in kilojoules per mole and so there's your answer Moving on, feel free to have a go at the following question. Again, this one's a bit more difficult. They actually give you the enthalpy change and you're actually working backwards to find the bond enthalpy of the fluorine fluorine bond itself. So yeah, in this example then, right, we've got fluorine reacts with steam as shown in the equation below. We've been given here an enthalpy change value, which is minus 598 kilojoules per mole. And we're told average bond enthalpies are shown in the table, which we can see in this little table over here. We're asked to calculate the bond enthalpy of the fluorine fluorine bond itself. Well, first of all, what I like to do is form an equation. So I know that the enthalpy change, which in this case is going to be minus 598, is going to be equal to, and then it's going to be my reactants minus my products. So in this case with fluorine, I'm going to have two lots of fluorine fluorine bonds. So that's going to be 2x. Examiners are quite comfortable if you use the letter x when dealing with unknowns. And then you're going to add that to, right, four lots of OH bonds because you've got two lots of water, two lots of OH bonds per molecule, and so that's going to be uh, times four lots of 464 itself, and so you're going to end up with four times by 464 itself, and so to all of that, you're going to subtract the following a value of for the oxygen, uh, oxygen bond, which is going to be uh, 498, so that's going to be 498. And then that's going to be times by one as well. And that's going to be added to, right, four lots of hydrogen fluorine bonds. So that's going to be uh, four times by, and then it's going to be five, six, eight itself as well. And then I'm going to put some square brackets around the entire thing. And so, right, what I actually end up with, if I simplify these answers down a bit, I'm going to have minus five, nine, eight being equal to, and then it's going to be two X and then add in. 1856 or 1856 and then i'm going to subtract a value of 2770 itself as well and so that's going to simplify down to minus 598 is going to be equal to 2x and then we're going to add minus 914 and then to get this uh, all on one side the x terms onto one side i'm going to uh, subtract minus 914 from either side and so what i end up with is the following which is that 2x is going to be equal to 316 itself so x therefore must be equal to 158 and that's going to be kilojoules per mole itself as well and so there is our answer